Hello friends, today we are gonna create this beautiful dashboard application using Next.js 14. We'll design this home page and after that you will learn how to fetch data using the new version of Next.js. This is important because we will not use an API route anymore, we will fetch and update our data on the server components. You will learn how to use pagination, how to search for any item, and you will see how easy to create all these functionalities without using any use state and use effect hooks. We will fetch the data using the Next.js navigation, and it improves the user experience and the search engine optimization. And after that, you will learn the most exciting part, Next.js server actions. As soon as you click here, it's gonna revalidate your data. And here you can add a new user with server actions. Let's see the user. It will display the user detail and we can update the data. And we will do the same things for the products. And finally, we will build the authentication and protect our routes using a middleware. Let's log out. As you can see, it redirects me to the login page and now I cannot reach the dashboard. Let's write the wrong credentials. And to show this error, we'll be using the new use form state hook. This hook allows us to get the response from a server action. If there is an error, we are gonna update the form state. And if I write the correct credentials, I will be redirected to the dashboard and now I cannot see the login page. It's a great project to learn the new features of Next.js 14. And in the next video, I will create a complete Next.js tutorial. If you don't wanna miss that, you can open your notifications. And after completing this tutorial, we will deploy our project using Hostinger. As you know, it's the hosting sponsor of the channel and I create different projects using Hostinger every month. And for this project, I'm gonna choose a VPS hosting. If you choose the most popular VPS, you will get a really generous RAM, storage and bandwidth so you can deploy all your projects on a single server. And these servers are super fast because they use NVMe SSDs and one of the most powerful AMD processors. And now there is the biggest discount of the year, only for Black Friday. And if you wanna get an extra discount, use the link in the description, choose your time period, and apply the LlamaDev coupon code here. After purchasing, you are ready to set up your server. Choose any location. We are gonna install a panel, and it's gonna be Cloud Panel. Let's create a password, and finish the setup. After this process, it will be ready to deploy your apps. So let's create our application and deploy it to our server. Okay, let's open up VS Code and create here a new folder. And inside this folder, we will create our next application. To do that, you can open up your terminal and say npx create next app and latest. If you do that, it's gonna install the latest version of Next.js, but I recommend you to use my GitHub repository and this starter branch, because if you watch this video after the release date, some dependency versions might be different. To prevent any possible errors, you can use this repository. I also removed all the unnecessary files and styles, so we are gonna create everything from scratch without wasting time. So I'm gonna come back and make sure you choose this starter branch because at the end of the video I'm gonna create another branch here and it's gonna be the completed version of the application and after choosing starter fork this branch and it's gonna create a new repository on your account so it will be easier for you to follow your steps during the development after forking you can come here and copy your URL and come here let's remove this I will say git clone paste your URL dot and enter. 
as you can see they are here but we don't have our libraries let's install i will say npm install and node modules folder is here right now it's ready to run let's run i will say npm run dev let's open up localhost 3000 okay it's here so let's decide what we are going to create this is going to be our home page and everybody will be able to reach this page but after that we are going to create this dashboard and we will be able to see this page only when we are logged in basically we are going to have three main pages the home page the login page and the dashboard let me log in okay let's create them and after we will start designing our dashboard if you check the app directory you are gonna see the page file here this is our home page let's create dashboard and login pages page.jsx and another folder and it's gonna be login let's create our functions i will say login page and dashboard page if you don't know how i'm using this shortcut you can watch my vs code video and you can learn how to create these react snippets okay let's see this is the home page dashboard and login okay perfect let's start with this dashboard i'm gonna open up my example as you can see we have a sidebar here and a nav bar and if you check other pages like users you will see that the sidebar and nav bar is still here or if you open up any other pages they are still here basically they are gonna be a part of our dashboard layout so instead of creating sidebar and navbar components and use them for every single page, we can add them into our layout and we are not going to waste our time. Let's do that. Firstly, I'm going to create my navbar and sidebar components. To do that, you can create here components folder or UI folder. Let's say UI because in the documentation of Next.js, they are using UI. And inside, I will say dashboard components login page components and we can create home page components inside directly this ui folder but remember the navbar and sidebar belongs to dashboard we are not going to use it in the home page or login page this is why i created this folder and inside let's say navbar oops navbar and sidebar Let's create our components and my component. I will do the same thing for the navbar. And let's use them inside our dashboard. To do that, I'm going to create my layout JSX. And as you realize, we have the main layout here. Let me shrink this and whatever i add here let's say test and this h1 tag is going to appear everywhere in dashboard in home page and login page by the way there's an error because i used it before body tag it should be inside but anyway this is how we are using layouts so I can do the same thing for the dashboard page. I'm going to remove this. And as you can see, we are going to need a children. And these children will be our main content. Basically, this ad page, users page, or these contents. So let's take these children. I'm going to close here. And I will say children. And inside my layout, I will say menu view, and it's going to contain our sidebar. 
and after this div i'm going to create another one and it's going to contain our navbar and these children so first one will be navbar and our children let's save this by the way and perfect so if i create any other page inside this dashboard we are going to keep seeing this sidebar and navbar let's create inside dashboard i will say users and products let's create our pages page.jsx let's say products page and users page by the way the name has to be page if you create any other name here it's not gonna work the extension can be js jsx or tsx let's say users page let's see as you can see perfect and products okay this is how we are using next.js layouts so let's give some style as you can see there is a space here but in our application we don't have any space it starts from here as you can see the color is different so let's give a global style if you install a next application you are going to see that your global cs is inside the app directory but i want to move this into ui folder like that let's open up layout and change here it's going to be ui and global css and this is the recommended folder structure in the Next.js documentation. By the way, I'm going to create a complete Next.js course. And in this course, I'm going to share my thoughts about this structure or generally about Next.js. But for now, for this tutorial, let's stick to official documentation and use it like that. Inside UI, we are going to create our components and we are going to define our CSS files. Okay. Let's actually close everything and open up global CSS. Firstly, I want to give a background and text color for my application. To do that, I'm going to create some variables. I will say root, let's say background color, and it's going to be this dark color. And I'm going to create the soft version of this color, BG soft, and it's going to be this color, and the text color will be white. But also I'm going to create the softer version, text soft, and I'm going to paste my color here. It's going to be this gray color. Okay, let's use this inside our application. To do that, I'm going to be using body, and I will say background color is BG. And the default color is, text color is text. And let's remove the default margin and padding using universal selector. And I will say box sizing and border box. If you don't know fundamentals, if you don't know what's the universal selector, why we are using our background color inside body, what's HTML, you can just check my previous tutorial. You are going to find awesome CSS tricks. And that video will be in the cart on the top right. You can check that video and come back. Okay. And what else? If you create any link, it's going to have a default color. To prevent this, I'm going to choose all the links. And I will say color will be inherited from the parent. So we are not going to define any color here. And I'm going to delete the text decoration. It's going to be none because by default there is an underline. I'm going to remove that and that's all this is our global styles i can close here and let's give a style for our dashboard in our example as you can see we have two main sections this sidebar container and our content basically we are going to be using flexbox so inside dashboard i'm going to create a css file and it's going to be dashboard dot module.css there's a typo here okay 
and each component is going to have its own CSS file. So I will say navbar module. Let's copy this and paste for sidebar. Oops, inside sidebar component. Okay, let's close them. And this is our main CSS file. And what I'm gonna do is create a container and make that container display flex. Let's open up our page. I'm gonna close everything here. This is our layout. And I will say class name styles.container. Let's import our CSS, by the way. I will say import styles from UI dashboard CSS. Okay, there is a warning here because I forgot the dashboard folder. And I'm going to give class name for this sidebar container styles dot, let's say, menu. And it's going to be content. Okay. And in our example, as you can see, this menu is smaller than our content. So we can give some sizes. Firstly, let's open up our CSS file here and I'm going to close this menu and I will say container display flex uh, for menu container. I'm going to give flex one uh, for content container flex will be four times bigger than menu like that. Let's give our background for the menu. I'll say background color. We can use our variable here and it's going to be BG soft. It's here. If it's not visible enough, it's because of the video. If you create your own application, you are going to see that this color is much softer. And let's give some padding. Okay, and I will do the same thing for my content. Before this content container, let's take care of our sidebar. I'm going to open up my sidebar container here and sidebar CSS here. And let's give class name styles.container. Let's import styles from sidebar module CSS. Before giving any style, let's create our items, those links. I'm just going to copy and paste my data. As you can see, we have some categories and each category has some links inside, which includes icon, the link URL and the title. And for those icons, we are going to be using React icon library. Let's do that. I'm going to open up my terminal and I will say npm install react icons and I'm going to write the version. As I said, if you don't want to see any conflict, any error, you should install exactly the same versions. After that, you can update. I will enter. Let's close again. And I'm going to import my icons like that. If you want to, you can visit this website and search for any icon. For example, let's choose material icons. And here, if you want to use this icon, just click on that and it's going to copy this component. And you can import this here. Okay. Right now, we can show our items in our sidebar. To do that, I'm going to be using map. I will say menu items map and for each item, let's say each category, we are going to create a div. Actually, let's say a list here and I'm going to wrap my map here and I'm going to call a list item. Let's check what we have. As you can see, each category has a title and list. Let's use this title cat.title. Of course, there is a warning because we didn't use key value. 
Let's say key. And again, cat.title because it's unique. Let's see. I'm going to close here. I'm going to open up dashboard. Oops, I didn't use curly brackets. And perfect. And I can do the same thing for our links. This list. To do that, I'm going to create another component. Let me make this bigger. And inside sidebar, I'm going to create, let's say, menu link. I'm going to copy this and create my component and CSS. Let's create our function. And using this component, I can show my links. Let's take our item here. Firstly, I'm going to show my icons and item load title. Let's make this a link. And the path will be item dot path. Let's check again. As you can see, title, path, and icon. Okay, let's use this component here. I'm going to wrap my category title. Let's say span. And I'm going to give a class name, and it's going to be styles.category. And after that, again, a map because we are using our lists. Cat. And I will say item. And for each item, I'm going to call my component. Menu link component. And I can pass this here. We need a unique key. And it's going to be item.title. Let's see. OK, perfect. Right now, I can give my style. I'm going to use this container. Firstly, I'm going to make this position sticky. That because in our example, when I scroll down, as you can see, it stays here. So I will say position sticky. And I can give any position here. Let's say 40. We can't see anything here because we cannot scroll right now. Let's give style for our items. But firstly, there is a user div here, as you can see. We have image and user text. Let's create that. Before this UL, I'm going to say user. And uh, it's going to have an image. Source. And I'm going to give a size. Let's say 50 pixels. Like that. Uh, for now, let's use this image. Where is our public folder here? We are going to be using this image because we don't have any user yet. So I will say avatar.png. Sorry, no avatar. Okay. After this image, I can create another div here. And it's going to be our user detail. First one will be our username. Let's say John Doe. And one more. And it's going to be the title. Let's give class name, username, and user title. OK, right now I can give my style. Firstly, it's going to be display flags. Our items will be horizontal. Let's center them. And gap between image and title will be 20 pixels, like this. Let's give margin here, 20 pixels. And for user image, let's make this circle, border radius, 50%. And I will say object fit cover. By the way, I don't have any class name. Let's give. OK. And let's make them vertical. User detail. Display flags, but it's going to be vertical. OK, let's make this bolder. 
complete 500 perfect and I can decrease this font size and I'm going to change its color and it's going to be our soft color okay what about our list firstly I'm going to delete this list decoration let's give a class name sorry it's ally it's going to be list styles.list let's use it I'll say list style and it's going to be none let's change this category names it's here again it's going to be soft font weight will be bold and font size will be smaller and I'm going to give margin to top and bottom Let's take care of our items. We have a container here. I'm going to open this here and let's say padding. Again, display flags, align item center. I'm going to center the icon and the text and gap between those items will be 10 pixels. Okay, right now I can give another class name. When it's active, we can show different background. For example, we are in the dashboard and it's going to be softer color. Let's check like this. And also when I hover over, I'm going to change the background. So I will say when I hover, the background color will be this color. And also I'm going to give here a condition. I will check my URL. If this part of the URL equals our link path, it's going to be active. To do that, we are going to be using use path name hook. const path name. As you can see, it comes from next navigation. Let's see what we have. I will say console log. Of course, to use this hook, our component should be a client component. So I will say use client directive. As you can see, for each link, it shows our path name. And since it's equal to this link, it's going to be active. So let's write here a condition. And I will say it's going to be container. But also, I'm going to check the path name. If it equals item path, it's going to be styles.active. So let's use this class name. I will say if it's active, it's going to be this color like that. OK, let's give some margin and change the border radius. It's going to be five from top and bottom. And border radius will be 10 pixels. OK, perfect. This is what we want. So let's take care of this now bar. I'm going to close everything and open up navbar and open up the CSS and I'm going to move this here. Quickly, let's say container and let's import this CSS. Actually, I can use my snippet like that. It's much easier. And firstly, we are going to have a title here. And again, we are going to take this title from our path name. And after we are going to have another container, this search bar and those icons. So I will say use client. And again, my hook here, let's import. And I'm going to import my icons like that. It comes from React icons. Firstly, we are going to have a title div. And I'm going to write here the path name but be careful here as you can see it's dashboard but if I use the users link as you can see the path name is dashboard and users if you want to you can leave it like that but if you want to use only the last item you should use a split function split use slash and using this slash I can separate my path name and I'm going to take the last item. To do that, I can use pop function. Let's see. And perfect. 
let me make this smaller and I will say menu view and inside we are gonna have the search view inside this view we are gonna have this icon and input my icon component here md search and let's create an input I'm gonna give placeholder and it's gonna be search and I'm gonna give a class name styles.input after this search component search view I can show my icons and let's paste them okay as you can see we can give any size here in this case they are gonna be 20 pixels like that let's give a style firstly our container will be display flex so everything will be horizontal let's separate our items using just five content and I'm gonna center them vertically perfect let's give a background I'm gonna give exactly the same color so let's say padding first I'm gonna give border radius 10 pixels and background color will be our soft color let's say BG soft okay let's change this title color will be soft and font weight will be bold and I can capitalize this first letter text transform will be capitalize what about this menu again it's gonna be horizontal and I'm gonna separate them display flex align item center and let's separate using gap and for the search I'm gonna give this color is gonna be lighter and I'm gonna give space here so let's see gap 10 and background color will be this light color let's give padding insight and border radius will be 10 pixels and for the input there is a default background color as you can see it's white let's change this I will say transparent we are not gonna see any background color or any border and the text color will be our text color okay awesome let's separate them and complete our navbar I will say icons gap between items will be 20 now we have created our sidebar and navbar by the way we didn't use logout icon let's create that button after this ul I'm gonna create a button and I will say logout let's give a class name and also I'm gonna use this icon md logout okay in our example as you can see we don't have any background or border it's gonna be just like these links but it has to be a button because we are gonna be using server actions when I explain that you are gonna understand better but for now let's give our style I will say logout I'm gonna give exactly the same style as we gave for our links but additionally I'm gonna delete the background color because it's a button or let's say background none border none and the width will be a hundred percent okay there is still background okay let's change this color it's gonna be white and perfect and I can give hover effect and I'm gonna change the background it's gonna be just like links okay and that's all let's delete this console lock 
and I can close everything and let's see what we have here as you can see we have some cards here and after this component that shows our users and the transactions and we are gonna have a chart here and finally those sticky boxes and they all are gonna be inside dashboard UI I'm gonna open up my sidebar and inside dashboard I'm gonna say cart cart JSX and CSS let's say container and let's actually copy this and paste inside our dashboard and it's gonna be chart let's change them and again actually let's do two more components and it's gonna be transactions right bar and what else okay that's all card transaction chart and right bar let's remove this and let's create our functions okay I can close them and let's take care of our cards I'm gonna take my CSS file here and I'm gonna call my components inside my dashboard dashboard page and let's create a div and it's gonna be carts and I'm gonna call my cart here let's import we are gonna have three carts by the way let's import our styles UI and dashboard okay as you can see we have two sections this section and this right bar section let's create our divs firstly I'm gonna give here class name let's say proper and the first section will be let's say main section it's gonna include all our components and other section will be let's say site and it's gonna contain our right bar after these cards I'm gonna call transactions and chart let's make this display flags first and give size for main and site because in our example as you can see this main block is much bigger than this right bar so I'm gonna open up my CSS dashboard module CSS as you can see we have our main items but inside content we are gonna have a wrapper main block site block and inside the main block we have our cards so let's make this display flex and gap between main and sidebar will be 20 pixels and I'm gonna give some padding here okay let's separate them this main block will be bigger so let's say flex 3 and it's gonna be 1 and I'm gonna separate my items inside this main block to do that I can use flex box and column and gap between each item will be 20 like that what about those cards again it's gonna be horizontal and just why content will be space between okay perfect so let's take care of our card component I can close here and this page inside our cart we are gonna have an icon a title a number here and this description let's do that I'm gonna use my icon and the size will be 24 pixels and after that I'm gonna create a div and it's gonna include our texts firstly we are gonna have a title let's say total users 
let's give here any number and finally let's take this from here and paste and i'm going to change this percentage because its color will be different so let's give a span and its class name will be positive it can be positive or negative we can take this as a prop of course but for now it can stay like that let's give class name for our title styles.title I'm gonna copy this and paste here and let's say number let's give here also I'm gonna say detail okay let's give our style firstly I'm gonna change the background again for the radius our items will be horizontal this icon and those texts and this text container again will be display flags but flag extraction will be column and I'm gonna change text sizes let's do that and firstly let's give our background color it's gonna be BG let's give our padding border radius it's gonna be display flags gap between icon and texts 20 and I will say cursor pointer and for texts again display flags but column let's change text sizes for number for example it's gonna be bigger 24 pixels uh, font weight will be 500 uh, for the detail it's gonna be smaller 14 and the font weight will be 300 and if it's positive the text color will be lime if it's not it's gonna be let's say red but where is our background color oh I said BG it's gonna be soft of course but their sizes are small let's give a hundred percent and perfect and I can give different background when I hover over let's take our container and hover effect and the background color will be softer let me copy and paste actually I can assign this as a variable but anyway when I hover over it's this color and what about this component let's open up I'm gonna close them and open up my component and its CSS file as you can see we have a title here and after that we are going to create a table and each row is going to include the username and image status date and amount inside container I will say h2 tag and it's going to be our title latest transactions and after that a table let's give class name actually styles.table and title okay and inside this table and I'm gonna create my table head and body basically it's gonna be our titles those titles and body will be our users let's create our rows the first one will be name status date and amount and inside body we are going to have our users the first one will be user image and username status date and amount let's create our image user image it comes from next image quickly I will say source and again we can use no avatar PNG let's give our size it's gonna be 40 pixels and height is gonna be the same and let's give class name because it's gonna be a circle so we can change it using this class name and I will say user image okay after this let's give username John Doe and we are gonna write here status but as you can see we have different status here pending done or cancelled for each item we can give different span let's say pending for example but also I'm gonna give a main style I can say styles dot 
status and also the style name and I can write here any date and any number here okay let's give different users and I'm gonna change this status I'm just gonna copy this and the second one will be done and cancelled okay right now I can give my style let's give our background color BG soft padding will be 20 pixels and border radius and for this title let's change its color and font weight and I'm gonna give space here let's say 20 pixels font weight will be thinner and the color will be our soft color tag soft what about this table as you can see it's small let's make this a hundred percent perfect and for each item inside I'm gonna give some padding let's use table again and I'm gonna choose TD and let's say 10 pixels did I give any class name here or not okay I didn't and before them I'm gonna create a div and it's gonna be user and I can wrap my image and this username okay let's say user I'm gonna separate them and align items will be center okay let's change this image it's gonna be a circle remember we have user image firstly I will say object fit it's gonna be cover and border radius will be 50 percent and what about those status I'm gonna give some border radius 5 pixels padding will be 5 again I'm gonna decrease the font size and the color will be white but when it comes to each item I'm gonna change their colors I mean background colors pending it's gonna be this color let's duplicate this I will say done and cancelled and I'm gonna paste my colors like that okay awesome and let's check as you can see we have a chart here to do that we are going to be using rechart library let's open up our terminal and i will say npm i recharts and the version will be 2.9.0 let's see what we can create let's open up recharts.org and here we have some examples simple line chart tiny chart we have area charts bar charts and many other examples but in this project we are going to be using line chart actually it's going to be dashed line chart as you can see we are gonna need a data and using this data we can show the numbers we can compare them as you can see it's comparing PV and UV and after creating our data using responsive container and line chart components we can create this chart let me copy this let's close everything and open up charts inside this container I'm gonna create my title first let's write any title here and after I'm gonna paste my items let's import our components here I'm gonna copy this paste here and also we are gonna have this data but I'm not gonna use this one I'm gonna use my own data let's paste here as you can see we are gonna compare 
to visit and click numbers and the name of each section will be the days of the week. So instead of PV, I'm going to say visit. Instead of UV, it's going to be click. Let's see. I can close here. Of course, this chart is interactive, so we cannot use server component. It's going to be use client. But it's going to infinity. To prevent this, I should give height for the container. Let's say 450. And perfect. Let's give style for our container. I'm going to change the background. Again, as you always do, I'm going to say soft, padding, and border radius. What about this title? I'm going to give exactly the same style. Font weight will be smaller, color will be softer. Uh, margin bottom. Of course, I didn't give class name. Let's give styles.title. And there's a trick here. If you are using responsive container, I recommend you to change this height and make it 90%. Otherwise, you can see some overflows and okay awesome as you can see this background is white and also we have this container behind let's see it's a little bit different let's remove that container we don't need this and i can remove this from import perfect and i'm going to change the background color of this tooltip I'm going to come here and say content style. The background color will be our main color, but I cannot use our variables here. I should drag the pass like that. And I'm going to remove the border. It's going to be none. Okay. What about this right bar? We have two items and each item has this title, another title, a subtitle here and a description and this button. And for the first item, we are going to have this image. Let's do that. I can close them and open up right bar. So let's create our first item. As I said, the first item has an image, so let's create here another div, and I'm going to say background container, and inside I'm going to create an image. It's going to be this image. I'm not going to give size, I will just say fill, so it's going to fill inside the container. Alt. And after that, I can create my texts. So let's say do texts. The first one will be, let's say notification, title, subtitle, and description. Let's copy this actually. After that, I'm going to say h3 tag, and it's going to be this title, another span, and description. Let's say p tag. Okay, let's give different class names. Title, subtitle, and description. And after we are going to have this button and as you can see there's an icon here let's create after this p tag i'm going to say button uh, a class name and let's say button and inside my icon player icon this one and i will say watch and after i'm going to create another item and it's not going to have any image actually i can directly copy and paste 
there is nothing different. We don't have to waste time. Like that. Okay. Let's give style. Let's see first. Oops, there is something wrong here. This is our container after we have item. One div is missing here, I think. Okay, let's import this. Of course, the image is too big. Let's fix this. Firstly, I'm going to say BG container so we can see our image. I'm going to give absolute positioning. So I'm going to show it on the bottom right. Bottom zero, right zero. And I'm going to give some size. It's going to be 50%. It's not going to contain the whole container. Of course, if you are using position absolute, the parent should be position relative. Our parent is item. Okay, let's change this object fit. It looks a little bit weird. Let's come here, give class name. Styles dot, let's say BG. Object fit will be cover. And I'm going to change its opacity. Perfect. And let's take care of our items. But before, when I scroll, it should stay there. So I'm going to say position fixed. Perfect. And let's take care of our items. I'm going to give my background color. You can directly use background soft. Or in our example, there is a linear gradient. The top of the element will be lighter. Let me actually copy and paste. As you can see, the bottom is darker and the top is lighter. And I'm going to give some padding from top and bottom. And border radius will be, as always, 10 pixels. I'm going to give margin bottom. I'm going to separate my items. It's going to be 20 pixels. And that's all. What about each item inside? I will say texts. Display flags. Flags direction will be column. I'm going to separate my items. Perfect. Let's give style for our texts. Notification. Font weight will be bold. And title is going to be 500. And font size will be smaller. And let's give soft color. Text soft. Now finally, we have a button. I'm going to give some padding insight. Let's check. I'm going to separate my items, give border radius and background color. And the text color will be white. Align item center and let's separate them. And the background color will be this purple color. It's going to be white. I'm going to delete the border. Oops, it's going to be none. And border radius, 5 pixels. And we can click on this. So I will say cursor pointer. Okay, as you can see, its size is too much. So it's going to be maximum content. Okay, but as you realize, it's cropping our image. So instead of cover, I can say contain. So it's going to fit inside this container. It's not going to crop. Perfect. But there is something wrong with this second item. When I paste my item, I made a mistake here, I think. So let's don't waste time and copy paste again. Oh, okay. In our example, it was text, but we use texts. Let's remove this and it's gonna fix. Okay, perfect. It looks really nice. So let's take care of users page. Let's see what we have. It's really easy. We are just going to add here a container. We are going to have top bar 
and this content inside top bar we are going to have search container and this button and inside this content we are going to have table and after we are going to create this pagination by the way there is a footer here but we didn't create let's create quickly i'm going to close them open up dashboards inside this ui i'm going to say footer I'm going to create my component and this CSS. It's really easy. There is nothing fancy. We are going to have two items. Let's say logo, another div, and it's going to be this text. Let's say text. Let's separate them. I will say container, display flags, align item center and justify content space between and as you can see its font weight is bold and this text is smaller so i'm gonna say logo font weight will be bold and text will be 12 pixels let's use it inside our dashboard i'm gonna open up my layout and after this children I'm going to say, show me my footer. As you can see, its color is different and we don't have any space here. Let's change. Firstly, I'm going to give here margin top and the color will be our soft color. That's all. So let's take care of our users page. I'm going to close them, open up users, oops, it's dashboard, inside users, let's close this. So let's create our containers. Firstly, I'm going to say the main container, styles.container. By the way, we don't have CSS file, let's import, import styles from app directory ui folder dashboard ui users and the css let's check okay it doesn't exist let's open up ui dashboard let's close them actually we can see better okay as you can see we don't have our pages yet let's create i will say users page and inside we are going to create components belong to this page and also the main CSS file. Okay, there is no problem anymore. Let's do the same thing for products page. Okay, let's create container. that okay i can close this menu and let's create other containers as i said top container and content container and after we are going to add other items so let's say top another one is going to be let's say bottom or actually we can directly create our table we don't have to give any container so class name will be styles.table. Okay. Inside our top container, we are going to have two items, search and button. But this search component will be functional. When I search for any name, it's going to fetch our data. So instead of writing this here directly inside our component, I can create a subcomponent. Inside users, I'm going to say search component. But creating this inside our page is not a good idea because we are using exactly the same functionality for the products. As you can see, it's going to be here. So this component doesn't belong to products or users. The better option is creating our component inside dashboard because it's a common component. So I'm going to come here and say search component. 
JSX. Let's create our function and this CSS. Okay, so let's use this here. Search component. And as you can see, we have different placeholder here. Search for product, search for user. So we can take it as a prop. So I'm going to say placeholder. And I can use it here. It's the user page. I'm going to take this prop here. I will say placeholder. And I'm going to use it inside my input. Let's create our items first. First one will be the icon. And input. And I can use this placeholder here. Let's give class name. I'm going to say input. And let's give some style. Let's see first. As you can see, it's exactly the same style. So I'm not going to create this again. I'm just going to copy and paste. It's exactly the same thing. And after, let's give a style for our container. As you can see, there is no placeholder. Let's give. I can close this search bar for now. And I'm going to say placeholder, search for a user. Okay, let's create our button here. I'm going to give class name styles.addButton. Of course, it's going to be a link. When we click on this button, we are going to open up add new user page. So a href will be dashboard users and add. I couldn't import. Okay, so let's separate them inside top. I'm going to say display flags and an item center and justify content will be space between. Okay, by the way, let's give margin for our container and background. Background color will be our main color, main soft color, BG soft. I'm going to give padding for the radius and margin top. Okay. What about this button? It was at button, I think. Let's check. Okay. I'm going to give some padding and background color will be our purple color. Remember, we use this for the right bar and the text color will be white or let's say text color. I'm going to delete the border. I'm going to give border radius. It's going to be rounded and we can click. Perfect. And what about our table? Let's see what we have first. Name, email, created at role and action. By the way, there is a mistake here. It should be status and after action. Let's create. Again, head and body. And the first one will be name, email, created at role and status and for the buttons we are going to be creating action column and let's create our first user i'm going to create a row and the first item will be the username and the user image so again i can create a div which is user and inside we have user image and after username John Doe. Let's give our image here, no avatar. Size will be 40 pixels. 
and I'm going to give class name. So we can give object fit user image. Let's create other items td, and it's going to be user email john at gmail.com. Another one is going to be date. Let's give any date here. Let's say admin status will be active and our buttons. Let's see. We have two buttons, view and delete. Let's create. Again, I'm going to create a link first. I'm not going to write anything here for now. When we fetch our users, we are going to send here the user ID. Let's create here our view button. And I'm going to give class name. It's going to be a button, styles.button, but also the view button because its color will be different. Styles dot, let's say, view. I'm going to duplicate this and it's going to be delete. Okay. Let's see. Let's give a style. I'm going to open up my CSS file here. And let's copy our table and start. Firstly, it's going to be 100%. It's going to contain all our component. And for each item, I'm going to give padding. Remember how we are doing this. Let's take care of this user. Gap between items will be 10 and I'm going to center them. Perfect. Let's make this circle quickly. User image, border radius, and also object fit. And for the buttons, let's actually create here a div. Buttons, it's going to contain our view and delete buttons. Again, gap between them. And for each button, I'm going to give padding from top and bottom, left and right. Let's give some border radius. Color will be our text color. I'm going to delete the default border. And cursor will be pointer, like that. Let's change colors. For view, the color will be teal, this green color, and if it's delete, the background color will be this dark red color. Perfect. And finally, we can create the pagination component. Let's open up sidebar, and again, inside dashboard, I'm going to say pagination. Again, it's a common component. I'm not creating this inside users. JSX. Create my component and let's create this CSS. Okay, let's use it here. After table, I'm going to say pagination. Let's see what we have inside. We are going to have two buttons. When it's disabled, its color will be different. There is nothing fancy. Let's quickly create. Inside pagination. Let's close here, actually. I'm going to create two buttons. The first one will be previous. And the second one will be next. That's all for now. Let's give style. I'm going to give some padding. I'm going to separate my items. Space between. Uh, for each button, the padding will be 5 and 10. Cursor will be pointer. And when it's disabled,
the cursor will be not allowed. Let's test. I'm going to say disabled. Okay, perfect. If you want to, you can give different background or whatever you want. For me, it's perfect. So let's do the same thing for the products page. I'm going to close everything and let's open up products. Actually, I can copy everything here and just change my table. Let's import link image. I'm going to import my styles. Main folder app UI dashboard products and CSS. Let's see. Oops, it should be dot. Of course, we didn't import search. And pagination. OK, there is no error. We are going to change our rows. By the way, let's change this placeholder also. Search for a product. And I'm going to change this link. It's going to be products. And let's see what we are going to have. We are going to have title, description, price, created at, stock number, and actions. Let's change them. Title, description, again, created at, but before, it's going to be a price, the stock, and action. And instead of user, I can say product. Let's copy this, actually. We can use multiple times. And instead of no avatar, let's check our image. It's going to be no product. And after the product name, let's say iPhone, the description, let's write here description for now, created at, but before, as I said, the price and the stock number. And that's all. Let's see. Perfect. Let's give our style. It's going to be exactly the same style. The only difference is this user container. It's going to be product container. So let's take everything inside users and paste inside products. And I'm going to change here. Okay, by the way, there is a space here. To prevent this, let's open up our dashboard module. And I'm going to say minimum height is going to be 100 VH. Okay. So what else we have? We have this view page, as you can see, the item image and a form here that we can edit our item. By the way, it looks a little bit ugly. Maybe we can change here. We can give more space. And after that, we are going to have this add page that we can add new product or user. Let's create those pages. Inside dashboard and product. I'm going to say add page. Let's say add product page. And I'm going to change this link. It's going to be app folder, UI dashboard, products. And it's a different page. So I will say add product and the CSS. Let's create this inside dashboard, products, add product folder and its CSS file. Okay, let's see if it works or not. I'm going to click here. 
okay, there is something wrong. Well, because I said add.jsx, as I said, if you are creating a page, it has to be page. Okay, awesome. Let's see what we have. It's the user page. Let's open up products. As you can see, we have some inputs and text area and select button here. Let's create them. It's really easy. I'm going to create here a form. Let's give class name styles.form. And inside, let's create our first input. Placeholder will be title to product title and the name will be exactly the same. It's important because we are going to push this item into database using this name. And I will say required. We cannot send any product without its title. And what else? We have select here that we can choose any category. Let's create, I will say select. Name will be, let's say category. And inside we are going to create some options. And the first one will be, let's say kitchen. Of course, we are going to give here a value. Again, kitchen. Let's give some more. I'll say phone. Computer. Let's make them capital. Okay, it's enough. And as you can see, it's here, but the initial value is kitchen. Instead, I'm going to use this text. So I'm going to create one more option here. It's going to be choose a category. And the value will be general, just like WordPress. And after that, another input. But this time it's going to be a number because we are going to pass here our price. Placeholder will be price and the name. Another one is going to be stock number, color size. It's going to be a text, color and size. And finally, we are going to create this text area. And it's going to be the description. Let's give placeholder and it's going to be description. I can increase rows, let's say 16. I can delete columns. And finally, a button. And I will say submit. And the type will be submit. Okay, let's give our style. I'm going to close everything here, open up the add page and CSS. Okay, so let's give our background as we always do. I'm going to say var and bg soft. And again, padding and border radius and margin top. After that, let's fix our form. I'm going to say display flags and let's give padding for our input and text area I will say form input text area and also for the select I'm gonna give padding 30 as you can see all items are horizontal but if I say flags wrap and wrap it's not gonna overflow anymore so if I give some size for my inputs, it's going to look better. Let's copy this. And let's say 45 pixels. I don't want to make this 50 because I want to give space here. Okay, there is no space because we didn't say just five content space between. Let's give. And perfect. So let's remove those background colors and borders it's gonna be transparent color will be our text color and I will give border radius 
Okay, let's give space between them. Perfect. Maybe I can give different border. Let's say two pixels, solid, and this gray color. Okay, much better. But why it didn't work? Because I didn't give width. Okay, awesome. And for this text area, I can give a hundred percent. Okay, and finally this button. Again, a hundred percent. I'm gonna give you some padding and the background color will be teal. Let's change the text color, it's gonna be white. I'm gonna delete the border, default border, border radius, and finally cursor pointer. Okay, so let's do the same thing for the user's page. When I click here, we are gonna see the new user page. Let's create. I'm gonna close them, open up my menu, and here, actually I can copy and paste this and change the name. Add user page, in this case it's gonna be user. Let's create this. Actually, again, I can copy and paste. Users is here. And I'm going to change the file name. Add user. And here. Okay. Let's see what we are going to change. I'm going to open my example here. Username, email, password, phone is admin select, is active, and address. Let's change. I will say username, email, password, phone, and let's change them by the way. It's going to be email, password, phone. It's not going to be required by the way. It can be empty. Select will be is admin. By default, it's going to be false. Let's say is admin. And it's going to be selected. And let's say yes and no. And false. Let's remove this. And I will do the same thing for is active. And the default value will be, let's say, true. And after that, address and button. Let's remove them. Okay, that's all. Let's see. Perfect. In our example, we don't have any border and this background color is different. Let's change. It can be darker. I said transparent, but I'm going to change it and it's going to be BG. So this dark color. It's much better, I think. Let's do the same thing for other one. Okay. And one more thing we are going to need, and it's going to be view page. When I click here, it's going to show the single user's information, and we will be able to edit our user. Let's check. I'm going to click. As you can see, this is the user ID. There is a user information here, and the edit form. Let's do that. I'm going to come here, inside users, and I'm going to create a new folder. And it's going to be ID. Basically, this ID can be anything. If we say users and any ID, it's going to show that page. And using this ID, we will be able to fetch our user. 
let's create our page and component and let's say single user page and I'm gonna change here app UI dashboard users single user and CSS so let's create this I'm gonna copy inside users I'm gonna create new file and paste this so it's gonna create this folder like that let's say container and let's open up our page firstly we are gonna have two sections information section and the form section so let's say view info container and one more and it's gonna be form container and inside this info container we are going to show our image and the user information let's create actually the image container and I'm gonna create an image source will be let's say no avatar again and I will say fill it's gonna fill its container and after that let's just say John Doe after that I can create my inputs but each input has a label so let's say label username let's remove this and after that input name will be username and the placeholder will be the latest name of this user as you can see its name is hello we can see here so let's say John Doe for now and I will do the same thing for other inputs let's say email like that it's gonna be email type password type will be password it can stay like that what else we have phone text and phone and I will say address it's gonna be text area it's gonna be a little bit bigger and address New York and what else we have is admin and is active let's create our label and I'm gonna create a select it's gonna be is admin and inside my options true or false I'm not gonna write anything else if the previous value is false it's gonna show no if it's true it's gonna show yes but we are gonna give this functionality later let's do the same thing for is active and that's all I think I'm gonna save and let's see okay our link is different let's open up users page and I'm gonna change this link it's gonna be dashboard users and the user ID for now let's say test and I will do the same thing for products let's see right now I'm gonna click okay there is something wrong because I forgot slash here okay it's here but there is something wrong there is a broken image of course it's gonna be no avatar and it contains all this screen because we didn't give any height and width for the parent let's fix that I can close those pages and move this CSS file here firstly let's take care of our image container so we can see our items but before 
let's separate our sections as you can see this section is smaller so i'm gonna say flex one flex three info container flex one of course it should be display flex let's give gap between them and after form container uh, flex three after that let's give size for the container in which container i will say a hundred percent and the height will be let's say 300 pixels and if i say position relative it's gonna fit inside this container like that let's give border radius if i do that it's not gonna be visible because it's overflowing so let's say overflow hidden perfect and let's give background color for the info container bg soft again padding and border radius and i can give space here actually let's give for the container perfect and let's change this font weight and i'm gonna give margin bottom here i'm gonna separate my image and this text maybe let's change this color it's gonna be soft color okay so what about this form container let's do the same thing background padding and border radius after that i'm gonna select my form by the way i didn't create any form let's create styles.form let's wrap our items like that okay i will say display flex flex direction will be column and let's change our items i will say form input text area and select i'm gonna give padding 20 some border i'm gonna change the border radius 5 pixels and the background color will be dark color so i will say bg and the text color will be text okay let's give space between them actually i can directly give here and i want to decrease the font size of labels i will say form label it's going to be 12. so let's create our button it's going to be a hundred percent let's give padding background color again teal and the color will be white i mean the text color let's delete default border and give border radius and we can click let's give space here okay by the way i didn't like this space i can change it i'm gonna come here info container and i'm gonna say height will be maximum content like this by the way i can delete this placeholder we shouldn't see our password like that okay it's not the best maybe i can make some changes here if i make you can find it in the github repository but for now it can stay like this so let's create our login page and after we can give our functionalities let's open up login and in our example i'm gonna log out as you can see it's really easy i'm gonna create a box here title to inputs and button and if i give wrong credentials it's gonna show here an error so let's come back and open up login page let's say container 
and inside I'm going to create a form. Let's import these styles. App directory, UI, login page, and CSS. Let's create this. And inside this form, we are going to have two inputs. First one will be username and password. And finally, a button. Let's say login. Let's give a style. By the way, it's inside the login page. It should be here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is giving full size here because I'm going to center everything. Like that. Uh, for this form, let's give background. BG soft. I'm going to give some padding and border radius. Let's give width and height. And my items will be vertical. So I will say column. And I will say justify content center. Okay, let's give space between them. Perfect. And what about inputs? I'm going to choose my form and input inside. And again, 30 pixels, border, border radius, 5 pixels. And the background color will be BG. So it's going to be darker. And the color will be text color. And for the button, again, 30 pixels. Background color will be our green color. Text color will be text variable. I'm going to delete the border and give cursor pointer and border radius here. Okay, that's all. But I didn't give any title here. I'm just going to come here and say h1 tag and login. Of course, it should be inside form. It's going to be vertical. And I can center this. I'm going to open up my form and I will say align item center. As you can see, their size are smaller right now because we centered them. So let's give a hundred percent. Okay, perfect. And that's all. This is our design, the login page and dashboard. We can see our users. We can view single user, add new user. By the way, did I give same thing for products or not? Okay, I didn't. Let's create quickly and after you are going to learn how to fetch data. I'm going to copy this and paste for products. Remember, it's the UI folder. I'm going to change the name. It's going to be product. And let's open up our page and create ID. And again, I'm going to copy this and paste. And I'm going to change my URL here. It's going to be product. And let's change here, single product page. Okay, I'm not going to change here because it's going to be dynamic. It can stay like that. First label will be title. It's going to be the previous title, so I can leave it like that. What else we have? Let's check. Price, stock, color and size. It's going to be a number, stock. Let's give any number here. 
color. And size. And after that, we can choose our category. And finally, this description. Let's change here. It's going to be the previous category. And finally, description. And it's going to be a text area. And the placeholder will be description. Let's see. Again, I should fix this link. I'm going to open up products page and actually I created here, but there is something wrong. Let's remove this. And I'm going to click. Okay, right now we are ready. Let's see how to fetch data. To do that, I can open up my users page. And here we are going to fetch all the users inside our database. But we are going to show here, let's say, five or ten items. So we are going to be using pagination. So let's open up our users page and fetch our users. To do that, we are going to need a database. And for this project, we are going to be using MongoDB. We can use any other database, but it will be easier for us because we are not using TypeScript, so we will be able to validate our schema using Mongoose. You are going to understand what I mean by that. But first, let's create our database. Okay, let's open cloud.mongodb.com and create a free cluster. I'm not going to show how to create a cluster, it's really easy, but there is something important here. After creating your cluster, you should give a permission to your application, otherwise you will not be able to use it. I'm going to come here and create a new user. I already have. Just give a username and a password and the role will be read and write any database. After that, you should come here and click on network access and add your IP address. You can add here your current IP address or basically allow access from everywhere. We can use it because it's just a development mode. But after deploying our application, we are going to write here our server address. Okay. It's going to make the changes and after that, we will be able to see our changes here. Let's click. As you can see, this is our previous application. But today, we are going to create, let's say, dashboard database. And in that database, we are going to have our users and products. If you check a post here, as you can see, the post table has its ID, created at date, Slack, title, description, image, and other properties. So basically, we should create this schema. We should define them first because it's really important to validate your table items because in our example, when we create a new user, for example, we should be able to send only username, email, password, phone, and others, nothing else. And also we are going to define our types. For example, username will be only string. Email should be string again, but it should be unique. We cannot use the same email or username again and again and password should be, let's say, minimum six characters. They have to be boolean, true or false. And after defining all these properties, everything will be much easier. But how we are going to do that? I'm going to open up my terminal and install a new library. I will say npm install mongoose. And after installing this library, we will be able to connect to our database and create our models. As you can see, it creates a new schema and it says name should be string, size should be string. And using this schema, it creates a new model. 
basically our table here, one of these tables. To do that, we should connect to our database first. Let's come here and choose the connection. As you can see, it's an async function, so we can use try and catch block like that. I'm going to copy this and open up my menu. And inside app directory, I'm going to create a new folder. And I will say library. And inside utils.js. So let's create our connection method. I will say export const connect. Let's say connect to db. It's going to be an async function. And I will paste my function here. And let's throw this error. Let's import mongoose. And right now, whenever we want to make an operation, like fetching user or product or adding new user, we are going to connect to the database. But if I do that, it's going to create a new connection all the time. To prevent this, we are going to check first if we are connected or not. If we are, we are going to use that connection. If not, we are going to create a new one. So let's create here an object. And I will say const db. And if we are connected for the first time, we are going to assign that connection here. And it's going to be db connections. And we are going to take our first connection and ready state. And if it's not empty, if we are already connected, we are not going to create a new connection. So let's say if connection is connected, just return. Do not connect again. Okay, right now instead of this string, we are going to pass our URL. To do that, I'm going to come here and I'm going to click here, connect. We are going to connect through our application, so I'm going to choose that. And I'm going to copy this URL. And after the URL, you can write here in a database name, let's say dashboard, and it's ready. But using your secret keys like that is not a good idea. When you use GitHub, everybody can reach your data. To prevent this, we are going to be using EMV file. I'm going to cut this and inside my root directory, I'm going to create a new file. It's going to be .env and let's say mongo and it's going to be this URL. So let's open up git ignore file and add here .env. So when you commit your changes, it's not going to show up in the GitHub repository. Let's use it here. I'll say process env and mongo. Okay, right now we are ready to create our models. I'm going to come here and create a new file. And let's create our user schema. I'll say new mongoose.schema. By the way, let's import this mongoose. Okay, and inside I can define my properties. The first one will be username. And its type will be string. I will say required. We cannot create user without username. And it has to be unique. Every user has different username. And minimum character will be 3. And the maximum will be 20. Let's do the same thing for others. It's going to be email. Again, string, unique and required. Let's do it here. I will say password. It doesn't have to be unique. I can remove this. And we are going to have user image. It's going to be string. It's not going to be required. What else we have? Remember, is admin, is active. Type will be boolean. And when we create any user, by default, it's going to be false. It's not going to be admin. So I can do the same thing for is active, boolean, and by default it's going to be true. 
and let's see what else we have phone and address it's going to be string again but not required and address and there is something important here when we create any new item I want to see the created at date let's see here as you can see it gives this created at date we don't have to create this manually instead I'm gonna come here and say timestamps and true so whenever we create a new user it's gonna create created at and updated at time so let's do the same thing for our product we don't need here I will say product schema we are gonna have a title string required unique I can delete here description again string but it doesn't have to be unique I'm gonna give a price and the type will be number again required but the minimum number will be zero we cannot give negative price and again image and it's gonna be actually let's remove here I will say color size and I forgot stock let's create stock here again it's going to be a number and the minimum number will be zero okay that's all so let's export them and use inside our application so I will say export const user mongoose.model and the table name will be user and we are going to validate our items using our schema let's say user schema but there is something important here if we already have user table we shouldn't create a new one instead we should use the existing one to do that I will say check the models and if user exists use it if not create new one and I will do the same thing for products like that okay right now everything is much easier I'm gonna close everything and let's create a new file and it's gonna be data.js basically we are gonna fetch our data using this file let's create the first one I will say export const fetch users of course it's gonna be an async function I will say try catch if there is an error show this error and also throw that error I will say throw new error and I'm gonna pass this error here or directly let's give any message fail to fetch users okay let's use our model and fetch all the users I will say const users it's gonna be user model and I will say find and of course it's gonna be await after fetching our users we are gonna send it of course we are gonna add something additional but for now let's test I'm gonna open up my users page here and I'm gonna fetch my data so let's say const users I'm gonna use my fetch function and it's gonna return our users of course async let's import and that's all let's see I'm gonna say console log users and I'm gonna open up my terminal I'm not opening my console on the browser because it's a server component this is how we can fetch data directly inside and as you can see there's something wrong here it throws this error let's see what happens okay there is something wrong with our connection let's check our EMV file it looks okay oh because we didn't connect <laughs> I'm so sorry I'm gonna come here before fetching data of course we should be connected first I will say connect to DB and let's check and again we have a problem let's open up this function and let's check what's wrong 
if connection is connected we are not going to do anything if it's not await mongoose connect process emv mongo and we are going to assign our connection here and i'm going to console log this error oops It's undefined because I said connection is going to be connections. Finally, there is no problem. And as you can see, it returns an empty array because we don't have any user yet. Let's come here and create a new one. By the way, if I refresh the page, we are going to see our database and our table. It's here. And as you can see, we have products and users. Let's add a new one. The username will be John email password and let's give any image. To do that I can use pexels.com. Let's choose any image here, doesn't matter. Like that. And let's say is admin. It's going to be false. Of course, it's going to be a boolean. And again, is active. It's going to be true. Okay, we don't have to add phone and address. I'm going to insert. And it's here. Let's check again. I'm going to refresh the page. And as you can see, it returns our user. Let's add one more. I'm just going to duplicate this and change the name. Let's actually add more because I'm going to show you how to use pagination. Of course, we shouldn't add this manually, we can use our add page, but I'm going to show that later because we don't know Next.js server actions yet. First, I'm going to explain and after we are going to add our own data. And let's add one more and it's going to be enough. Okay, let's refresh the page and see them. Okay, perfect. Right now I can use all these users in our page. Let me close here. And using our array, I can add different rows. So I'm going to say users.map and for each user, show this row. Like that. There is a warning because we don't have any unique key and it's going to be user.id and right now as you can see we have six items let's change their names and images it's going to be user.username and i'm going to write here a condition i will say if user has an image show it if not show no avatar png and as you can see, there is a warning here because it doesn't allow us to use any other image source. To prevent this, we have to add this hostname to our configuration. To do that, I'm going to open up my menu and find next config. And inside, I'm going to add images. We are going to add a different domain. Let's say remote patterns. You can specify here your protocol. It's going to be HTTPS only for the security and the hostname will be imagespexels.com. Okay, let's see. I'm going to refresh. And perfect. Let's remove one of them. I'm going to edit and delete this image. Okay, awesome. It works. Let's change others. User.email 
user dot created at time and we can write here our condition if the user is admin right here admin if it's not let's say client and i will do the same thing for is active let's remove this one and it's going to be is active if it is it's going to be active if it's not passive and finally instead of this test i can update my link here and i'm going to pass here my user id like that okay perfect as you can see there is something wrong with created at date because we don't have any created at date let me copy and paste from my previous data for example i can copy this and created at date and i'm gonna paste it here and its type will be date let's see as you can see there is something wrong because we are sending a date we cannot show it as a string to prevent this i'm gonna come here and say to string if there is created at convert it to string like that and it's gonna show you the full date but i want to get only this part so i can use a slice method and i'm gonna take from the fourth character and 16 like that so what about this search functionality when we write any name here we are gonna search for our users normally in react you can create a use state hook and store whatever you write here and you can create a use effect hook and whenever it changes you can trigger the search functionality but we don't have to use use state we don't have to use use effect so let's open up the search component and i'm gonna store my input inside my browser url so when we search for john for example we are gonna add it here like query and john and using this query we are gonna refetch our users to do that we are gonna be using next navigation we are gonna need our path name and also the search params basically whatever after this url let's use them and you are gonna understand better firstly of course it should be a client component use client and i will say const search params and use search params hook as you can see it comes from next navigation and path name let's see what we have inside i will say console log search params and path name i'm gonna refresh open my console as you can see this is our path name we already know how to use it and this is a function that we can create a new url and pass inside any query we want let me show you how to do that i'm gonna close here and let's create a new url i will say const params new url search params and i'm gonna pass my search params here and after that i can set any query params.set let's say test and the value will be let's say value and using these new params i can change my url to do that we can use replace method i will say const replace it's going to come from use router hook again next navigation and using this method i can change my url i'm going to use my path name remember it's dashboard and users and additionally i'm going to add my search params here let's see but before there's a mistake here we should call our function okay and as you can see it automatically adds this value so what can i do when i change this input i can take this value and add as query let's do that 
I will say on change method. Let's call a function, handle search. Let's create our function. I'm going to take the event and create new params. Let's move them inside. And I'm going to set search query and its value will be event target and value. Let's try. I'm going to remove here and right here, John. As you can see, it's immediately here. If I change, it's changing. Perfect. So right now in this page, using this query, I can refetch my users. Let's come back and I'm going to take my query. To do that, we can use search params and you can get any query you want. In our case, it's going to be Q. Let's do that. I will say const query is going to be search params dot query. And by the way, it can be empty. So I'm going to put here question mark. And if it doesn't exist, it's going to be an empty string. So let's pass this query into our fetch users function. I'm going to take it here and I'm going to write my condition. The username should include this query. If you write here directly your query, you have to write the exact name, but we are going to search every single letter. To do that, we are going to be using regex. Const regex. I'm going to create a new expression and it's going to include our query and I can give here an option and it's going to be I and it means it's going to be case insensitive. So if I write here any capital letter, it doesn't matter. They all are going to be lower cased. And let's use it here. Regex will be regex. Okay, I'm going to do one more thing here. I'm going to write a condition. If event target and value exists, we are going to set these params. If it's not, we are going to delete that query. Because when we write here anything and delete, it shouldn't show this query anymore. Let's try. I will say John. It's here. But if I delete, it's gone. But it's not fetching. I said John, but it's not here. Let's see what's wrong. Let's open our console. Let's remove those users. And those console logs. And let's come here and check if we have query or not. Okay, it's empty. Because I said query, it should be Q. Okay, it's here. And our user. Okay, perfect. If I say Jane, just J, as you can see, John and Jane. Okay, awesome. But searching users for every single letter is not a good idea because anytime I enter new item here, it's going to search for users and this calculation will be expensive. To prevent this, you can write here a condition and say if it's less than three characters, don't search. Let's do that. I'm going to come here and I will say if event target value more than two, we are going to set this query. Let's try. I will say J O as you can see, it's not searching, but if I say Of course, length. Let's try. It's not here. If I say H and perfect. What else you can do? You can add debounce functionality and you can wait user to finish typing. To do that, we can use use debounce library. Let's say npm install use debounce. And I'm going to write here my version. 
Okay. Right now, using this library, I can wait for my users to finish their typing. To do that, I'm going to come here and wrap my function with use debounced callback. I'm going to wrap this like that. And I'm going to add the time period, let's say 300 milliseconds. Let's import this from our library. Right now, if I write quickly, as you can see, it's not searching, but when I finish, it waits 300 milliseconds and search for users. And this is how you can prevent abusing your database requests. Okay, so what about this pagination? I want to see here only two items, only two users. To do that, again, I'm going to add here a query and it's going to be page. By default, it's going to be one and we are going to search for our users. If there are more than two items, we are going to enable this next button. And when I click here, we are going to update this query. It's going to be two. And when I click here, one again. Let's do that. By the way, we are going to use exactly the same functionality for the search component. So let's add here a new query. I will say params set page. And it's going to be one. Because whenever we change our input, it's going to show the first page. So even if we are in the second page or third page or whatever, when we write anything, it's going to reset here. And in our users page, by default, it's going to be one. Let's say page. If there is no page, it's going to be one. And again, I'm going to pass this page here. Let's take it in our function. Let's remove this console log. And I'm going to create here how many users I want to see. So let's say const item per page. Let's say two. Of course, in a real world example, it should be five or 10, but we don't have that much user. For the test purpose, it can be two. And I can write here limit. And using this item per page, I can limit my query. In this case, it's going to fetch only two items. But how I'm going to see the others? It's really easy. I'm going to come here and say skip item per page multiply by page minus one. So what this does is it skips a certain amount of items. For example, when the page is one, one minus one will be zero. Zero multiply by anything, it's going to be zero again. So it's not going to skip any item it's going to show us the first two items. But if we are in the page two, it's going to be two minus one, one, two multiplied by one, it's going to be two. It means it's going to skip the first two items and show the other two items. So if I change here, if I make this page two, as you can see, Harold, Jane, page three, John and Mike. So using this page query, I can update my pagination component. Let's open. Again, it's going to be use client. Let's take them again. I'm going to copy here and paste. And I'm going to import them. Okay. Right now I can create a new search params. like that and again I'm going to need item per page because I'm going to make some calculation item per page again it's going to be two if you want to you can store this in your EMV file but it can stay like that let's take our page by the way const page search params get and the page if it exists, we are going to store this. If it's not, it means we are in the first page. And right now we can make our calculation. I'm going to create two variables. First one will be has prev and the second one will be has next. If we have the previous page, we will be able to click on this button. If it's not, we are going to disable. Let's write here 
if we don't have previous page and I will do the same thing here disabled and we don't have any next page okay so let's make our calculation I will say item per page multiply by page minus one but remember it's a string we should convert this so I will say parse int and if it's more than zero let me explain let's say we are in the first page one minus one is going to be zero zero multiplied by any number doesn't matter it's going to be zero again and it's not bigger than zero it means we cannot click on this button it's going to be disabled if we are in the second page here is going to be one one multiplied by two is going to be two and it is more than zero so we can click what about here again item per page multiply by our page minus one it's exactly the same but also i'm gonna add here item per page and it should be smaller than the total number of our users in our case it's six of course we are gonna take this as a probe but let me explain for the second page here is gonna be one one multiplied by two is gonna be two two plus two it's four and it's smaller than six smaller than total number but when it comes to third page here is gonna be two two multiplied by two four four plus two six so it means we don't have any other user we are at the end of the page so it's gonna be disabled so instead of six let's take our count as a prop and I'm gonna pass it here you can directly say const count equals users dot length but it's not a good idea because remember it returns only two items it's not returning the total numbers of users so we cannot use it like that instead we should use our database here and fetch all the user numbers and send it as a response with these users so i'm going to create a new query i will say const count await user dot find again i should use this regex because we are going to use pagination for search functionality also and i'm going to say count and this function is less expensive it's not actually get any user information it's just gonna find and count so let's use it inside an object count and users oops count and let's take it here it's not returning users anymore it's returning count and users and I can send it to my pagination okay and what else whenever we click on previous or next button we are going to change our url we are going to set new page and change the url using replace method let's do that i will say on click event and let's call a function handle change page and i'm going to pass here my type and it's going to be previous let's do the same thing for the next button and the type will be next let's create this function const handle change page i'm gonna take the type and i'm gonna write my condition if the type equals previous params dot set page and i'm gonna take the previous one previous page number and i'm gonna decrease and if it's not i'm gonna increase this number it's that easy and finally using this page number i can replace my url question mark and params let's see i'm gonna delete this page as you can see at the beginning it's disabled when I click here, 
page will be two so we can click on previous let's click again we are in the first page second and third and right now it's disabled and if the calculation is confusing for you don't worry you are going to use this calculation thousand times and once you learn it it's going to make more sense okay let's do the same thing for products let's open up firstly i'm going to come here and copy them and i'm going to open up products page here let's paste I will say async let's import this next navigation and it's gonna be fetch products of course we didn't create yet let's create I'm gonna come here duplicate this and change the name and instead of user we are gonna be using product model and instead of username we are going to be using the product title let's say products okay we can use this function right now let's open up our page and import and it's going to be products and using these products we can show different rows map for each product show this tr by the way it's the wrong place it's our hat it will be body okay let's give our unique key it's going to be product.id and I'm going to write here if product has an image use it if not no product of course slash here and it's going to be product title description price date But remember, we are going to convert this to string and take 4th and 16th characters. And this is going to be, what's that? Stock. And I'm going to change this href. Dashboard products and the product ID. As you can see, we don't have yet, but if we create it's going to be a number and stock. Let's create two more. Of course, we don't have created at, but let's test. As you can see, there is a problem. If it exists, and perfect. And when I click here, it's going to show the product ID. It's that easy, guys. And if I search for any item, oops, there's something wrong here. It's not updating. And also, we cannot see the next button because we didn't send here count. Okay, it's here. But what about this? It's not updating. Oh, because I said minimum three characters, so I'm going to search for test three. And again, it's not here. Let's check. Search params query. 
okay we are sending this query and page query and page let's see again okay it's not showing because I'm using navigation it's a page we should take this as a prop okay it works okay perfect okay guys right now you know how to fetch data how to search them how to use pagination right now let's learn how to use next.js 14 server actions after this new feature we don't have to create any api by the way i still prefer creating apis it's more reliable and testable but i want to show you how you can do this without any api layer let's close everything to test server actions i'm going to create a test page let's say test folder and page insight let's create a component and i'm going to create here a form before actions we were not using this action remember what we were doing if there's an input we were creating here const input set input use state and we were making this component a client component and using use state we were updating our input using this set method let's say on change event target and value and using a button we were creating on click event or on submit event in the form and we were sending our data to database but after actions we don't need use state we don't need client components we don't need any listener here we are able to send everything inside this form using server actions so let's say action and i'm going to create any function here handle form and let's create this function and here i'm going to use use server directive and it means everything inside this function is going to run on the server let's say console log hello and let's open up our console let's test and as you can see there is a warning here server actions must be async functions because we are gonna make some post requests and let's see I will say John and I will send and as you can see our text is here but the best thing is we can reach any input inside this form I'm gonna write here form data and let's see what we have inside but we cannot see our input because we didn't give any name here let's say username I will send again and as you realize in this form data object we have our input object and it includes the name and its value so using this object I'm able to use this name so if I say const username it comes from form data and I will use the get method and write here the name of the input and its username right now I can use it here and if I click right now it's undefined because I destructure this of course it should be without object and it's here and it means inside these server actions we can take any input value and send it to our database and right now we can turn back to our users page and add new user page and here we can collect all the data from this form and send it to mongodb using server actions and the best thing is after sending our data to database we can actually refresh this data here let me show you how we can do that i'm gonna close here and inside library I'm gonna create new file and it's gonna be actions let's create our first action I will say export const it's gonna be add user async function 
Let's get our input values. The first one will be username, form data, of course. We should get this from here. Get and the input name, username. And I can do the same thing for email, passwords, phone, address, and others. But instead of writing them one by one, I can directly destructure them. I will say username, email, password, phone, address, is admin, is active. And remember, the form data is an object. To destructure our items, I can use object from entries and form data. Right now, using all this data, I can create a new user and add it to my MongoDB. So I'm going to use try catch block. If there is an error, firstly, we are going to console log and after throw this error. And let's say fail to create user. Let's create our user here using our model const new user, new user model. And I'm going to pass my items here. Let's save it to database. I will say await new user and save. That's all. Of course, we should be connected to MongoDB like that. So let's use this action. By the way, we didn't write here use server directive. Don't forget that. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So I can open my add user page. And inside my form, I can call my action. And it's going to be add user. Let's test, by the way. It's not the design part anymore. So let's come here and I'm going to give username. I'm going to give some password. Phone number is admin will be false. Is active will be true. And let's give some test. I'm going to submit. Let's see. I'm going to refresh this page. And as you can see, our user is here. So what actually happens here is, let's open up our network tab and write another user. And they are not required. They can stay like that. And when I submit, as you can see, it's actually making a request. And the endpoint is dashboard users and add. It's just like an API request and it returns to 100 successful. Let's check our payload. As you can see, we are sending username and other user data here. And there is something important here. You have to validate your inputs without sending data to database. Because even if you write here required and type should be email or any other validation, users can send different data using this endpoint. What we should do is validating our data in this action. But remember, we are already using models here. So even if different data comes in, it's not going to work because our schema accepts only those items with some types and other requirements. So we don't have any problem right now. And also, don't use your entries like that. Let's say data and directly send a data instead this structure every single items. In this case, you can make sure which data you are using. And I'm going to come here and I will say validate path. And I'm going to write the path which has the data that I want to refresh. So it's going to be this path. I'm going to copy and paste here. So as soon as you create a new user, it's going to refresh this data. In our example, we are using different page but imagine you have your data and also you have a form here. And thanks to revalidate path, as soon as you click to add new user button, you will be able to see your user here. So you don't have to use use query. You don't have to use SWR. 
everything is much easier right now. And in our project, when I click here, I want to redirect my users to this page. And again, I'm going to use same path. I will say redirect and paste my path. Let's import. It's going to come from next navigation. Don't use anything else. And let's see. Any password here. And let's send. And it's here. Of course, our password is too weak. Let's come here. And our user is there. Okay. But there is something wrong here. Let's check our database. And as you realize, when we send any password, we are storing it in a plain text. But you should never ever store your passwords like that. You have to hash it first and store it like that. So when user enters their password here, we are going to hash this also. And after we are going to compare them. If they are equal, it means it's the correct user. Let's do that. I'm going to hash my password. To do that, I'm going to use a library and it's going to be bcrypt. npm i bcrypt. And I'm going to write the version. Let's see how we can use. I'm going to zoom in. As you can see, we are using the hash method and passing here our plain text. And we are passing the generated salt here. And after, it returns us the hashed password. Let's do that. After this connection, I will say const salt await bcrypt generate salt. You can give a number here. By the way, let's import this. And after that, I'm going to hash my password. Hashed password. Again, await bcrypt dot hash method. I'm going to pass here my password comes from user. And I'm going to use this salt and it's going to generate a new password. And right now, instead of this plain text, I can use it. Let's see. I'm going to create new user. Secure user. Again, from 1 to 6, I'm going to submit. Let's check. I'm going to refresh. And as you can see, the password is hashed. Right now, it's much secure. So let's do the same thing for the product. I'm going to duplicate this. And it's going to be add product. And we are going to take title, description, price, stock, color, and size. We are not going to need that. We are going to be using product. And I'm going to paste my data here. By the way, if you are using multiple server action, by the way, let's remove here. You don't have to write them inside every single action. You can just use it at the top of the file. Like that. So we don't need this. Okay. Let's import product model. And I will do exactly the same thing. I'm going to open up add product. And form action will be add product. And if everything is OK, we are going to revalidate and redirect to products page. Let's see. IKEA desk, any price, stock, and description. I'm going to submit. There is an error. Because I said splice, it's going to be slice. Let's open up products. And it's here. Okay. So let's do the same thing for this delete action. 
So what I'm going to do is creating here a form. And when I click on this button, I'm going to send my product ID to action. And we are going to delete this from our MongoDB. Let's do that. I'm going to come here. Let's duplicate this. I will say delete product. And inside form data, we are going to have only ID. And I will say product, find by ID and delete. And I'm going to pass here my ID. If there is a problem, we are going to throw this error. And in this action, you are going to understand this part better. Of course, we are not going to be redirected to anywhere. And let's open up products. And before this button, I will say form. And the action will be delete product here. And of course, we are going to need an input. It's going to be text. And I'm going to pass here product ID. And in this case, we are going to see this input here, but I don't want to do that. So I will make this hidden. Perfect. And when I click on this button, we are going to send this ID. Don't forget this name. And we are going to take that ID from this form data and we are going to delete that product. Let's do that. And let's remove this IKEA desk. I'm going to click. As you can see, it's gone. Let's delete. Perfect. It works. It's that easy, guys. Let's do the same thing for product. Sorry, user. And I'm going to open up users page. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing here. Input is going to be hidden. Name will be ID. And the value will be user ID. OK. Right now, you know how to use server actions. You can do exactly the same thing for update page. Let's open up ID page, users and ID. And firstly, I'm going to fetch my data. We are still using our design here. To do that, I'm going to open up my data. And if you remember, we are fetching our data using this file. Right now, I'm going to fetch a single user. Patch user, we don't need rejects or pagination. I'm going to delete them. Actually, let's delete here. And I will say const user await user model find by ID. And I'm going to pass here the ID comes from our client. And right now I can return this. Let's say fetch user. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing for products. OK, that's all. Let's open up our page. Right now, using this function, I'm going to fetch my user. Of course, it's going to be async. Const user fetch user. And I'm going to pass my ID here. It's really easy to take this. Only thing I should do is write here params. And I'm going to take the ID from these params. I can do that because remember, the page name is ID. If you write here Slack or something else, it has to be Slack or any other things. I can pass this ID here. And user dot username. And again, let's copy this. If there is an user image, show it. If not, show no avatar. OK. And after that, we are going to update our user. Let's open up our action. And copy here. Sorry, this one. And I'm going to paste. 
and this time it's gonna be update user in this case I need my ID also and I can do it here right now let's say update so what I'm gonna do here if you remember those inputs are empty right now if you don't write anything here when I click on this button it's gonna send an empty string and if we are sending empty string we shouldn't update that part we should update only whatever we change here to do that I'm gonna need a condition firstly let's create our fields const update fields it's gonna be username email password phone address and is admin and is active right now I'm gonna check those inputs if they are empty or undefined I'm gonna delete them from these update fields if they are not empty I'm gonna use them and update my user so let's say object keys updated fields we are gonna check every field here so I'm gonna use for each I'm gonna take the key and I'm gonna check if update fields key equals an empty string or undefined I'm gonna delete that key I will say delete that key of course it's ending here okay so using these update fields we can update our user so I will say await user find by ID and update and I'm gonna pass here the user ID and after update fields let's test I'm gonna save here let's change those placeholders by the way it's gonna be username user email we don't have to write here phone and address let's see by the way why it's not fetching let's see our ID okay it's here but Oh, I didn't say await. Okay. So let's try. Of course, we are going to need our ID. Let's close here and create an input. And it's going to be hidden. Name will be ID. And the value will be user ID. And let's give our action update user let's see as you can see all this data is here let's update this username and as you can see it's here and others are still the same actually it's changing this role because by default it selects the first value so I can write here a condition if user is admin it's gonna be true and is not admin I will do the same thing here let's see this one it's client and active so it's gonna be false and true false and true okay let's change here for example phone I'm gonna update and perfect it's here okay this is how we are using actions you can do exactly the same thing for products just duplicate this and say update product and change here
like that. If they are empty, it's going to delete. And after product, find by ID and update. If there's an error, it's going to be update product. And after that, we are going to revalidate our products. And our users and products are ready. We can add, delete, update, and fetch data. So let's take care of authentication. For the authentication, we are going to be using AuthJS. Let's get started. Normally, to use NextAuth, we should create an API route and write all the configuration inside the API folder. I also prefer this method, it's much easier, but since we focus on server actions and handling data without an API layer, let's do it without creating an API. And this is what the Next.js documentation recommends us. As you can see, it uses Next Auth, but be careful here, you should install the beta version, because this version is compatible with Next.js 14. Let's install. I'm going to open up my console and I will say npm install next of and beta. Actually, let's write here the exact version number in order to prevent any possible errors. So the version will be 5.0 and beta. And after that, we are going to need to create auth secret and URL. Basically, this script is used for creating session tokens, and this is for creating authentication pages like our login page. So let's copy this and paste to env file. I'm going to open up env and paste it here. You can write here any secret key. It doesn't matter. You can use this command on your terminal and create a new secret. But it doesn't matter, it can stay like that. And after that, we are going to create our configuration. Let's create a new file. I'm going to create it here. And it's going to be config.js. I will say export const auth config. I'm going to write here my login page. Pages, the sign in page will be the login URL. This is important because if we are not authenticated, we are going to be redirected to this sign-in page. After that, we are going to create a callback that we can write the authorization logic because if we are not logged in, it's not going to allow us to see this dashboard. It's going to redirect us to the login page. And also, if we are logged in, we are not going to see this page. It's going to redirect us to the dashboard. Let's do that. I will say callbacks authorized and it's going to take our session and also the request so we can check the request URL so firstly I'm going to check my session I'll say const is logged in if there is a user inside our session it means we are logged in right now we can check if we are in the dashboard or any other page I'll say const is on dashboard so we are going to check our request url and the path name and if it starts with dashboard it means we are on the dashboard right now i can write my logic i will say if it is on the dashboard and if it's logged in we are going to return true so user can stay on the dashboard, but if it's not logged in, we are going to return false. And it's going to redirect unauthenticated users to login page and else if is logged in. So we are not on the dashboard, but we are logged in. We are going to be redirected to dashboard. So I will say return response.redirect. I'm going to create a new URL and it's going to be dashboard. And I'm going to pass here request and next URL. And finally, if we are not on the dashboard, 
we are going to return true and in this case users can stay wherever they are so right now we have to run this function for every request to do that we can use next.js middleware let's check the documentation as you can see we are going to pass our configuration here and it's going to run this function on every request except of this matcher and it includes our api and static files we should write this otherwise we won't be able to see our images so let's copy this and paste here of course i should change here it's auth config by the way it's here i'm gonna move this to app folder okay right now we can create the login function let's check the documentation as you can see we should create here our provider and it uses the github provider but in our application we are going to be using our username and password so i'm going to use the credential authentication in auth.js the recommended way to login is using social accounts or email codes but most of the websites are still using username and password credentials and for this kind of dashboard application it's not a good idea to log in with facebook or something so we are going to be using our credentials so i'm going to create providers and inside credential provider and finally we are going to fetch our user but there is something important here if you remember we are using bcrypt to hash and compare our passwords but we are using this configuration in the middleware and the problem is the bcrypt library is not JS dependent so I'm not gonna write my providers here instead I'm gonna create a new file let's say auth.js and after I'm gonna create my provider let's copy this and paste and I'm gonna remove here we are going to fetch our user outside of this function let's say const login we are going to take the credentials and it's going to be an async function and we are going to fetch our user compare our password if everything is okay we are going to return our user here but before let's spread everything inside our config let's import like that and instead of export default i can destructure my sign in and sign out functions that we can use in the login page i will say const sign in sign out and also i'm going to destructure auth session so using this function we can fetch our user and use it in the sidebar okay let's fetch our user i'll say try catch if there is an error console log this error and throw a new error and i will say fail to login let's connect to our mongodb and after i will say const user await user model and i will say find one because we are finding only one user and I'm gonna write my condition here and it's gonna be username should be credentials username and I'm gonna write here a condition and I will say if there is no user in the database with this username we are gonna throw an error and let's say wrong credentials and after if there's a user we can compare our passwords i will say const is password correct and we are going to be using bcrypt let's import this and we are going to use the compare method and we are going to pass here our plain password which is credentials.password it comes from the login form and we are going to compare this with the user 
dot password. Basically, the password inside our database, this hashed password. So if they are not equal, again, we are going to throw an error. If it's not correct, I'm going to throw exactly the same error. And finally, if everything is OK, we can send our user. Return user. Let's call this function here. I will use try catch again. If there is an error, we are going to return null. In this case, the login process will fail. Let's say await login and I'm going to pass my credentials. And finally, I'm going to take this user and return this user. So next auth is going to take this user and pass it to session. Let's see. OK, we are still in the dashboard. There is something wrong with the middleware. OK, it's not running. If I move this here. OK, right now it works, but there is something wrong with our configuration because we didn't add here any provider. I'm going to leave it empty because we passed our providers here inside auth.js and right now as you can see there's a typo here starts with and as you can see it redirects us to a login page let's try dashboard and I cannot see that page okay and right now we can login don't forget to create your middleware in the root don't create inside app directory or source directory. It has to be inside root. OK. Right now, using this form, we can complete the login process. Let's create an action and take those fields and try to login. Inside library and actions. I'm going to say export const. Let's say authenticate. We are going to take the form data and we are going to fetch our user, let's say async. So let's destructure our username and password. Remember how we are doing this object from entries and form data. I will say try catch block. If there is an error, Throw this error and I will say await sign in function. Remember, it comes from next auth. And I'm going to write here the provider name. It's going to be credentials. If you are using any social media, it's going to be like Google, GitHub, or whatever. But we are using the username and password. And I'm going to pass my username and password here. Let's say console log error and throw this error. OK, let's use this action in our form. I'm going to open up the login page and pass it here. But don't forget writing your names. It's going to be username. Let's import this and let's try. So let's say user1, I'm not sure have we created this user or not. Let's log in. And as you can see, we have an error because we didn't create that user. We are going to handle this error and show it somewhere here. But for now, let's complete our process. This is correct one. Past user. I'm gonna log in, and as you can see, we are in the dashboard. So if I try to go to the login page, as you can see, it doesn't let me to go. Okay, perfect. Right now, let's use our auth function and fetch our image and username, and after we are gonna handle our error. Remember, 
we have this function let's use it in our sidebar i will say async const session await auth function let's see what we have inside i'm gonna open my console as you can see it has the expires at date and a user and this user includes only email but we are gonna need this image and username by the way there is an error here there is something wrong with our images it's probably because of this middleware and matcher we are gonna handle this but for now it can stay like that let's try to add our username and image to our session To do that, I'm going to open up auth.js and write different callbacks. When you log in, by default, next auth is storing your email address into JWT token, but we can change it. We can store something else like username and image. To do that, we are going to be using JWT function. I will say async JWT and it has the token and the user. And I'm going to check the user first, in any case. And I'm going to pass some other information to my token. So token dot username will be user dot username. And the image will be user dot image. And after I can return my token. But to reach this data, Inside our component, we should pass the token information to session. To do that, I'm going to create another function and it's going to be session. And it includes the session and the token. It's exactly the same thing. We are taking the data from user and passing the token. And we are going to do exactly the same thing here. We are going to take the data from the token and pass it to session. So let's say token and it's gonna be session and finally we are gonna return this session so let's see right now I'm gonna log out and try again by the way we don't have our functionality here let's use our logout function remember it's here we can use it where is our sidebar here? And what I'm gonna do is creating here a form and wrap my button. And when I click on this button, we are gonna call our function. Of course, we are gonna create here a server action. To do that, I will say async. Remember, server actions should be async. And I'm gonna write here my directive and await sign out function let's import and that's all let's see i'm gonna click as you can see we are not logged in anymore what was the name test user i'm gonna log in and let's check our console here and right now before this image error you are gonna see that we have username here but we don't have image because in our database as you can see it doesn't have any image let's add actually i'll say image and let's choose an image here this one i'm gonna save by the way, there was something wrong here because we should pass it inside user object. Let's do that. I'm going to come here. Instead of directly session, I will say session.user. Okay, let's see. I'm going to log out. Test user. And 
perfect. Right now we can use them. Let's take our user directly. And I will say user dot username and if user has an image we are going to use it if not we are going to use this image okay it's here so let me check this middleware Okay, this is the correct one. You can find it in the GitHub repository. As you can see, there is no error. Right now we can log in, but if you remember, there is something wrong here. If I write any wrong credentials, it shows up this error component, but I wanna show my error somewhere here. Let's say after button. But if you are using your form inside the server component, it's not possible to catch the error and show it here. So what you can do, you can come here and create an error layout. Of course, it should be use client and show your error inside this component. Okay, we can see our error, but this is not what we want because user has to go back and write the credentials again. To prevent this, we should use a client component. So I'm gonna take my form from the login page and create a new component. Let's do that. Inside login page, I'm gonna create new component. Let's say login form. Let's create our function. and CSS and I'm gonna take my form style here from the parent and paste it here and right now let's open up the login page I'm gonna delete this form instead I'm gonna call my component login form right now we don't need this action here and let's paste our form for now let's leave it empty okay there is something wrong because I forgot dot here Okay, as you can see, it's exactly the same. Right now, I'm gonna convert my login form component to client component and create here a new function, handle login. We are gonna take the form data and we are gonna call our action here. So it's gonna be async and I will say const data it's going to be our server action and we are going to pass this form data let's open this function and instead of throwing error I'm going to return let's say error equals wrong credentials let's close everything and open up login form I will say if data dot error set an error so I will say const error set error use state hook and I'm gonna set my error here and if there's an error I'm gonna show it here let's use this function here and let's try I'm gonna write some different username and password and login and as you can see wrong credentials but there is one more way if you don't want to use use state and this function you can use use form state hook this hook allows us to update our state based on the form action let me show you how it works 
let's check the example as you can see we are creating this hook and we are passing here the initial state and when we click on this button we are calling this form action and it triggers our increment action and this action is taking the previous state and returns a new state so we can use this state inside our component after this button for example so in our case what we can do the state can be our error message at the beginning we can define this as undefined and when we call our action if there is an error we can update our state and show it after our button let's do that and you are gonna understand better I'm gonna copy this and paste here I'm gonna delete this use state let's import okay let's import manually from react dom and uh, we are gonna pass our form action here and it's gonna trigger our server action and at the beginning our error will be undefined and I will say if there's a state show that state let's open up our server action right now we are gonna need one more parameter and it's gonna be previous state and right now if there's an error I can directly send this error let's try I'm gonna refresh and let's give some username and password and login and as you can see it's here and the best thing is even if you disable the JavaScript it's still gonna work and this is one of its awesome features okay let's log in again and right now we can authenticate fat users products add new one or update by the way you can do exactly the same thing for those forms you can make them client components and show the error here i'm not gonna do exactly the same thing again and again and that's all this is how we are using next.js 14 i'm gonna explain every single thing about next.js 14 in the next video but for now you know the basics so let's deploy our application okay before the deployment i'm gonna build my application for the test purpose let's check if everything is okay or not i'm gonna say npm run build as you can see there is no problem right now we can upload our files to the server and after we can build and start our application let's open our project i'm gonna select everything here but we don't need dot next git and node modules i'm gonna take the rest and i will compress and we are gonna upload this zip file to our server let's open up our hosting panel this is our server it's up and running let's come here this is the cloud panel url let's click and remember our username it was admin and we created a password i'm gonna log in and right now we can create our website i'm gonna click here we are gonna create a node.js application because next.js is using node.js under the hood and here you can write your domain name for this project i'm gonna be using dashboard llama.dev and this is our username we are gonna use this later but don't worry you don't have to memorize everything is inside your hosting panel let's create okay let's manage our website and i'm gonna install the ssl certificate so our application is gonna use https connection i'm gonna come here and choose this certificate let's create and install okay it's ready as you can see everything is much easier thanks to cloud panel and by the way 
Don't forget to redirect your website to this IP address. If you don't know how to do that, you can search for changing DNS records. It's really easy. There is nothing complex. And let's come here, file manager. And this is the main directory of the application. I'm going to choose my website. And right now I can upload my zip file here. I'm going to take this and upload. That's extract. It's going to be the main directory. Okay, right now we can connect to our server and build our application. Let's get back to the hostinger. Let's click here. And using this command, we are going to connect to the server. But to do that, we have to add our SSH key. I'm going to come here. SSH keys. And I'm going to add my key here. Let's create a key. I'm going to open up my terminal and create my key. Okay, it's ready. So let's copy this key using this command. By the way, all these commands will be in the description below. Don't worry about them. And let's come here and paste our key. And let's give a name. It doesn't matter. And it's going to take a while. And after that, we will be able to connect to our server. Okay, it's ready. Let's come here. And copy the connection command. I'm going to paste it here. I will say yes. And we are connected. The first command I'm going to write here is sudo su and llama dashboard. Let's get back to the main folder. And let's see what's inside. As you can see, this is the folder that includes our websites. Let's get inside hddocs. And inside this folder, you are going to see our website. Let's open cd and our website. And if you check inside, you are going to see that all the files we uploaded are here. Let's install our libraries. I will say npm install. OK, we can use this command because remember, we have created a Node.js application. So everything is ready to use. Let's build our application. I'm going to open the production mode and I will say npm run build. As you can see, there is no problem. It works as expected, but I forgot something. Remember, in the EMV file, our authentication URL is still localhost. Let's change here. Otherwise, we cannot log in. So I will say dashboard llama.dev. Of course, it's going to be HTTPS. I'm going to save. And let's build again. During this process, let's update our MongoDB. Remember, in the network access, we are not using any specific IP address and it allows everyone to access our MongoDB. To prevent this, I'm going to write here the server IP. Let's come back and copy this IP. And I'm going to paste here. And right now, only our server has the access. Right now, it's much secure and it's ready to run. I'm going to start my app. And let's see. I'm going to refresh my page. And as you can see, our home page. Let's try to open dashboard. It doesn't allow because we are not logged in. Let's log in. OK, wrong credentials. I forgot. What was the user, test user, or let's see, and it's ready. Let's check our users. 
Okay, they are here. Let's check the pagination. Perfect. I'm gonna delete this one. And this one. Perfect. Let's try to add new user. Test from website. I'm gonna submit. It opens the users page and let's check. And it's here. Perfect, it works. We have only one product and let's try to log out. Okay, all functionalities work. And that's all guys, I hope you liked it. Remember, the next video will be the complete Next.js 14 tutorial. And if you have any questions, if you didn't understand any part of this tutorial, I highly recommend you to watch the next tutorial. Okay, if you learned something new today, please like the video. You can support Lamadev using the link in the description below or by joining the channel. Don't forget to follow Lamadev's social media accounts. I hope I'll see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.